Hello everyone and welcome back to Filmbook Review, an official YouTube channel of Filmbook. Featured in Google News, IMDb's News Desk, and a member of the Critics' Choice Association, Filmbook is an entertainment industry news website that reports on the film and television show industries in the United States and across the world. Today on Filmbook Review, I will be reviewing the film Eric LaRue, a movie that screened at the 2023 Tribeca Film Festival. Eric LaRue is directed by Michael Shannon, written by Brett Nevu, and stars Alexander Skarsgård, Judy Greer, Alison Pill, Paul Sparks, and Annie Paris. This is a Eric LaRue movie review, and there will be spoilers. If you like our movie reviews, please like this Eric LaRue film review, as that helps us out with YouTube's algorithm, and consider subscribing. Once subscribed, click the bell notification box, and you are all set. Please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash filmbook. And now, the Eric LaRue movie review. Brett Nevu brings his first adaptation of his own stage play, Eric LaRue, to the screen by way of first-time director Michael Shannon, and it loses some finesse in the transition. Nevu is an ensemble member at a Red Orchid Theater in Chicago, of which Shannon is one of its founders. Clearly, Eric LaRue was and is a labor of love shared between Shannon and Naveau, driven by the timeliness of its subject and eager to explore its depths. It's easy to see the courage behind the conviction in this story of a school shooter's impact on the families and their local community. The setup is remarkably effective, establishing the mood right away. The dark pall of tragedy hovers over every action and reaction as a brooding woman, Janice LaRue, Judy Greer, goes soberly about her business, rebuffing, and rather rudely at that, anyone attempting support or solicitude. Soon enough, the absence of her son Eric heralds festering grief, big time. By degrees we discover Eric was a high school student who had shot and killed three classmates in a bid for vengeance. It makes sense that community outreach lay in the hands of the clergy. After all, it goes with the territory. But why Naveau penned the pastors of two rival congregations as he did, and in such low regard, is a bit mystifying. For example, we're not sure what to make of well-meaning minister Jack, Lawrence Grimm, when he bolts home after losing control of a healing group session with Janice in attendance. Is the humor peppered in meant as comic relief? On the other hand, Daddy LaRue's paternal pastor, despite his rank chauvinistic ideology, is warm, caring, and convincingly charismatic at the pulpit. In fact, stage-bound as all the characters are, the performances are striking all around. Major kudos to Shannon's directing skills. When it comes to acting, here he gets as good as he gives. Miss Greer's sadness is spot on. Alexander Skarsgård is the strapping but gentle hubby in true evangelical tradition. Alison Pill is remarkable in her turn as the chipper blonde in LaRue's congregation, who can't seem to keep her hands off him. Annie Paris, Kate Arrington, and Mirka Girton are all extraordinary as the grieving moms. The heavy-handed, declamatory dialogue in Eric LaRue no doubt to good effect on stage, consists of long stretches of cold-shouldered silence, alternating with abrupt, sniping confrontations, put-downs, and rude interruptions, emphasizing the character's inability to make meaningful progress through the miasma of grief and resentment. But it lacks the sharp cadence and poignancy we find in stage-to-film works by David Rabe or Mamet. As a result, the audience doesn't fare much better. We can only watch as cinematic subtleties come up short. We finally get to meet Eric in prison when Janice, apparently after much trepidation, goes to visit him for the first time in a visiting area which, on a visiting day, is inexplicably empty. The interaction between him and Janice is much the same in tone as the embittered or shrieking ones with LaRue, her boss, or her neighbor, blunted and whispered. Then there is Eric, hunched over and monotone, who astutely catalogs the bad prison conditions, rotten food, poor treatment by the guards, states time and again his taking responsibility, despite the fact that, yes, okay, so he was bullied, but so what? Still undeserving of any scrap of consideration or forgiveness. After offering his mother some veiled insults, he extracts a promise to convey his remorse to the mothers of his victims. The custom is to write letters to that effect. Ask any corrections counselor. She takes without comment his demand that she never come back and leaves without a word. The last scene is the most perplexing of all. Janice abandons her car at the side of a road devoid of traffic, more emptiness, continuing on foot as the credits roll, leaving us to ponder its meaning. In the long run, while Eric LaRue easily holds our attention and the pacing is good, 
it doesn't shine any new light on the nature of kids who kill kids unless, is surrendering to futility the only answer to suffering? And that brings us to the conclusion of this Eric LaRue movie review. I would love to hear your thoughts on it below in the comments section. If you liked what you heard during this review, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Please also visit and subscribe to our podcast channel at Film Book Podcast and our trailer and reaction channel at Film Book Trailers. If you would like to get Film Book's articles delivered to your inbox, sign up for our daily newsletter in the description at film-book.com. Thank you for viewing, and you can watch one of these reviews next.